CDL school does not prepare you to drive a truck. There's just really, there's really no feeling like it once, even if you're a passenger, um, you know, looking out the window, until you have your hands on the steering wheel and the people are in the cars or darting in and out around you and you can't get in a driveway and people are honking at you, there's just no way to um, recreate that in a CDL experience. running out of hours and you need to park to find a place to sleep and the truck stops are full. Um, all of those, all of those things. There is a lot of um, trainers that are in it for the money only. They don't want to train. They're broke. They've been starved out and pressured to train. So is that somebody that is going to really care about your training or they just want to get the miles? You can't really blame them because they came into trucking for the same reason as you because they wanted a new career and a new job and then they got starved out or pressured into being a trainer. So, are they a little resentful? Yes, they are. So when you don't listen to them and they're trying to teach you, and they might not even be a good teacher. So, this is the carrier's fault. This is the industry's fault. This is what they've done. This is what they've made. And you're kind of making lemonade out of the lemons that they have created here. Like I said, you can't pick your trainer, they assign them. You can ask for guidelines. I asked for a female non-smoking trainer. Um, and I got one. I was real lucky, kind of. And I have to say that even though the things that she did were wrong, there was a whole other element that made it where I could at least learn some stuff. A lot of people become trainers because they're on a power trip. A lot of truck drivers are very proud, independent-minded people. It is very difficult to find more than five truck drivers that can agree on anything. So. Your trainer is going to teach you stuff and they're going to try to make you think it is the only way to do it. Lots of ways to do stuff. Some of the things that trainers will do is try to get the student to log things improperly. Um, which is, when you're a student, how do you know what you're doing? You're already breaking the law from day one. Doing things that are illegal and unsafe, like this time of year in the winter time, you're supposed to have chains on your truck to go into certain states. My trainer tried to get me to go over Donner Pass, and when I said, aren't you supposed to have chains? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you do. You know. You're trying to set me up so that I get the citation. So you have to know you have to know your stuff a little bit to stand your ground and you need to document it. Some of the trainer assignment are done by people who have a conflict of interest. In the first down rather report, Queen of the Road, Tom Hansen, formerly of the CRST Safety Department, said in there and they showed a visual aid of how a lot of the new students were flunking the road tests they took when they first arrived at CRST and he 
was told to make the road test shorter and they were still plugging it. And he says in there, some of the people that are in charge of safety were also in charge of producing numbers. There's a lot of conflict of interests in this industry with regards to the students. So you're going to see, somebody used the term the other day, pretzel logic. You're going to see a lot of stuff when you enter trucking that does not make sense at all. It doesn't make any common sense at all. Because you're thinking, you uh, have all of these safety things pumped down your head. And then you see all these things that are to the absolute contrary when you start getting into truck driver training. And you're like, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. It's because people have a conflict of interest. I, in my personal opinion, they do it deliberately. You know, they have the guy that's supposed to be watching out for safety. Also, you know, having to produce some sort of numbers that look like they're producing something. What I see is a lot of times trainers are assigned to students based on ethnicity. They don't say that outright, but I've seen it a lot. And as I said in before, I see the races stick together, they stick up for each other. That's not always the case though. So, and especially women, they don't even stick up for each other at all. Now, my first trainer was pretty young. She was 29. She'd been driving for three years. She was a good driver. She wasn't, she prided herself on being a good trainer. Her truck was very comfortable, it was very neat, and it was very tidy. But she liked to provoke me, but I didn't let her know that she was provoking me. I let her think that she was dominating me. I needed to know what she knew. So even though she was saying things to me to try to provoke me, I just let it be. Because I needed to know what she knew. Um, I didn't know she had a pill problem initially. I knew she was in pain. I knew that she was sick. I knew she was love sick. She had been in a relationship with somebody for, I think, maybe a year that she had been giving him some financial help, some expensive gifts, and had recently found out he was married and was heartbroken. I understand that. I'm a girl, okay? Um, it's really hard to be going through a breakup when you are driving a truck. And I did experience that, and I don't wish it on anyone. It is very, very hard to concentrate on the road when you have your mind going on this. It's, you, it's, it's the time where you go, you know what, what's more important? That, that I waited to see if it was going to work out, or this, which could be my future. And that's where the whole road starts splitting off. So I felt bad that and that's one of the reasons that I didn't talk about her a lot in my story because as a woman I felt bad that she was in hurting over that situation with regards to the nastiness though she had tendencies where she would encourage me to tailgate um, shout about it that she wanted me to go faster sometimes on curves that were snowy and wet like in um, Parley Summit in Utah, which is by Park City, um, the, the incident at Donner Pass. Um, she was continually stopping at truck plazas to pick up on guys. And then about halfway through the process, I realized that she didn't just have this bag of pills because of a little bit of pain. She was in a lot of pain and she was abusing the pills. So I became aware that she she kept having to stop to get these prescriptions filled. And sometimes they were not in her name. And one part, we had to go to the emergency room and she, she needed to, wanted to get an epidural for the pain. And I'm like, why would you want to get the bottom half of your body numbed to drive a truck? Like, if you're, if 
you're in that much pain, you need to go home. I don't like the term lead seat. Um, it, it's almost like saying you can dominate this other person, and they do. There's a lot of abuse of power and trucking with the trainers, with co-drivers, with dispatchers. There's too many chiefs and not enough Indians. There's a lot of abuse of power in middle management. Most of the middle management that I've met are useless and should go work at McDonald's. Uh, some of the, the trainer is your perception too. My friend Anthony got a trainer. He thought, oh, he, he never lets me have routing on the Qualcomm and we have to map it out all by hand, by the map. And um, then I had a, another person, I went to CDL school, he got mad because his trainer was making him recite stuff from the FMCSA book. And I was like, I'd be glad if I had that because I'm getting like the, the, the short route to everything. And it's making me worry that when I'm out here by myself, I'm not gonna know what to do. So if you have a trainer that's making you go the long route, you should be thankful because Sometime you're going to be on your own and you're going to have to figure it out by yourself.